Hi, it's Maya here with my August and September reads and receipts. In these videos, I go through what I've read, my TB account and how I'm doing with my challenges. And my TB account at the start of August was 58 books. So let's start with the reads. August was the month that I moved, so don't hold your breath that I read a lot. I finished one novel, one novella, two short stories and a manga. And then in September, I just read five volumes of manga. So... But the ebook that I read was Dragons of the Dwarven Death by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, which is a high fantasy novel. So this is the first book in the Dragonlance Lost Chronicles trilogy, which is a new trilogy set between the old original books in the Dragonlance Chronicles trilogy. So this book takes place in, in between Dragons of Autumn Twilight and Dragons of Winter Night. This book focuses on finding and entering the Dwarven Kingdom, which is where the main characters were at the start of Dragons of Winter Night. The Dragonlance Chronicles and this new trilogy are about a group of fantasy adventurers in a D&D setting and they're fun. They're not the best written, but there's some interesting characters that I like to follow. I had fun with the first half of this. It was great to see new adventures from these characters, but I do find it pretty weird that if all of this happened, that none of this was mentioned ever again. That's the danger of adding new books in between older established series. The second part, when they got into the Dwarven Kingdom, I found to be pretty boring. I didn't find what was happening that interesting, plus we were pretty close to the start of the second original book, so I knew what had happened even though I hadn't, didn't know how it had happened. And how it happened was pretty boring. Next I read a manga, Go For It Nakamura by Sunday, and I read this while visiting Raya from the Bookfinch. It is a high school romance manga about a boy with a crush on another boy in his class. Nakamura's goal basically is that he wants to be able to talk to this boy and to become friends, but he is shy and feels awkward. I really liked reading this, but I have to admit that it's fading from my memory quite fast. It is a standalone, even though I think there is a sequel now. Then I read a science fiction novella from the library, and that was Absalom for The Wild Build by Becky Chambers. I was apprehensive about this book because I wasn't that into A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which was Chambers' debut novel, um, which a lot of people loved, but I wasn't that into it, but I really enjoyed this. It seems that you just have to give me a robot to follow, even though we have to take into account that what I had previously read had been Chambers' debut novel. So. This novella tells about a tea monk who basically goes around making tea for people and offering them a relaxing moment, and the tea monk suddenly gets a craving to leave their regular route and go experience the wilderness. And that is where they meet a robot. Robots gained self-awareness like centuries ago and disappeared, wandered into the wild, never to be seen again, so it is a big event that a robot has now appeared. And I really enjoyed following this robot, whose name is Moscat. I loved seeing how it was learning about how people do things and then also sharing tidbits about the robot society and how the robots function. Um, it's just eternally interesting to me. Next, I read two short stories. One of the short stories was Eating Dormice by Tansy Rayner Roberts, which is a science fiction short story from Patreon. The author described it as ancient Rome space opera. This is in a world where the Roman gods have returned and the main character has Vesta talking to her in her head. So. She is leaving to become a Vestal Virgin in a temple in Mars. This is about sister relationships, a uh, controlling mother and getting away from that control. And the name comes from the fact that Dormice were eaten in ancient Rome. The other short story that I read was Dragon Slayer No. 9 by Intisar Kanan, which I got when I joined Kanani's newsletter. Um, it's an old story, it's not as good as Kanani's newer stuff. It's basically just a dialogue between a dragon slayer and a dragon. It was quite short. Then in September I only read those five volumes of manga. I read One Piece volume 91 to 95 by Eiichiro Oda. I read this from the library and I'm catching up with One Piece, but I'm always behind. This is, as you may know, an adventure manga about pirates and they are currently on this island inspired by historical Japan. One Piece is hilarious and dramatic, but I have to take regular breaks from it because it has a lot going on, and this is why I never catch up. I think I will be taking a break again after I finish this arc. So now we're moving on to the receipts. Did I finish the book for my Finish 5 series challenge? No, I'm still at 1. Did I finish a book for the buzzword reading challenge? No. The prompt for August was body-related words in the title, and September's was game-related words. And I've really dropped the ball with this challenge after the start of the year. Then let's move on to something that I have more to talk about, which is books hauled. In August, I only got two ebooks. 
Uh, the first was Tall and Dark by Susanna Roundtree. This is a historical fantasy where the main character can see ghosts. Um, I got it for free as part of some sort of promotion. I can't remember what it was anymore. Then I bought Widdershins by Jordan L. Hawke, which is a fantasy romance about a linguistic scholar working in a museum and a detective. Together they are solving a case of murder with the side of a creepy cult. This is set in 19th century New England and uses Lovecraftian elements. Then in September I bought physical books, so my TBR number is in danger. I bought Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher, which is a fairy tale fantasy novella, which brings my TBR to 59 books. Then I finally got a copy of A Guest in the House by Emily Carroll. This is just gorgeous. Just look at it. This Carol's new horror or suspense graphic novel, it came out in August and I've been meaning to buy it ever since. This brings my TBR to 60 books. Then I bought a manga, I bought Lisa Lotte and the Witch's Forest, volume 1 by Natsuki Takaya, who is the creator of Fruits Basket, which is why I bought this. This is a fantasy manga about Lisa Lotte who moves near a forest that is said to have witches. This a lot that brings my TBR to 61 books. And that wasn't all. Then I also got Be Very Afraid of Kanako Inuki by Kanako Inuki, which is a collection of horror manga shorts uh, from the career of this, I think, prolific horror mangaka. And I hadn't heard of them before. Reya gave me this. I didn't buy it, but Reya gave me it and it brings my TBR to 62 books. Now finally, let's move on to the stats. In August I read 5 books, which was 806 pages, and in September I read 5 books, which was 1004 pages, which was all manga. Uh, but September was the end of another quarter, so here are some quarterly stats. From July to September I read 15 books, 5 each month, 60% of those were library books, 13% were free ebooks, um, the rest are 7%, which means just one. So those are one book I bought this year, one book from my shelf, one book from a subscription service like Patreon, and one reread. So all of this means that my current physical TBR number is at 62 books. So we're back in the 60s, but I am determined to end the year with a number starting with 5, so wish me luck. That was all from me for now, and I'll see you in my next video.